When a company wants to return capital to its shareholders, it has two ways of doing that. One is through a cash dividend. Now this is pretty easy to wrap your head around how this is uh, returning cash to shareholders because the company is literally sending them cash. The other way that they can do that is through a share buyback or a share repurchase. They're the exact same thing. Now, when a company does a share repurchase, it is returning capital to its shareholders, but it's a little bit uh, harder to wrap your head around how this is the exact same thing as the company paying a cash dividend. So what I'm gonna do in this example or in this video is walk through a specific example of why a cash dividend and a share buyback are uh, economically equivalent to an investor. So the example I'm going to use is this company, uh, this made up company, Overland Adventures, and they regularly pay a cash dividend of $2. And they're gonna pay out this cash dividend um, forever. So the company's not growing, um, and so each year they're going to have $2 in cash in which they need to distribute to shareholders. Uh, the company has a 5% uh, required return, um, and they currently have 100,000 shares outstanding. Now we're going to work through two scenarios. One scenario is that they keep doing exactly what they're doing. They're going to pay out a cash dividend of $2 forever, and we're going to see what an investor has at the end of the day. We're also going to work through a second example where the company switches to using a share, uh, share buyback or a share repurchase and show you exactly how an investor who, uh, who owns 21 shares can perfectly replicate uh, that dividend. So they can create a homemade dividend. Now, for clarity, we need to start off with the timeline. Each year, there's going to be $2 uh, accruing over each period or over each year that needs to be paid out to shareholders. So over this first year, $2 in earnings per share is going to accrue. And then at time period one, $2 is going to need to be paid out to shareholders. Now we're standing here at time zero um, in our timeline, and we're going to have two specific points that we're going to be analyzing. The first point here is this one, this arrow in red, which is just like one second prior to the payout happening. So like one second before that dividend is paid out. The purple arrow over here on our timeline is one second after that dividend is paid out. So all the text in red is just immediately prior to the dividend or payout, um, and all the text in purple is immediately after that. So the first thing I want to do here is find the price of the stock today. So we're standing here at time equals zero. Now this is a perpetuity, and so we can use that perpetuity formula where we take that flat $2 cash flow that we're going to receive forever. We can divide it by the required return, which is 5% or 0.05. And standing at time zero, the value of that share of stock is $40. Now they have 100,000 shares outstanding, and so their overall market cap at time equals zero is $4 million. Now let's fast forward one year to one second before that dividend is paid. With this, so we're standing there right before that dividend's paid. At that time period, the company is going to have $2 in cash that it's accrued over that first year. It's also going to have some value coming from that infinite stream of, of cash flows happening in the future. So it's still going to re be receiving or creating $2 in cash forever. That has value. Once again, we can use that uh, perpetuity formula to find the value of that. And that is the $2 that they receive each period forever uh, divided by the required return of 0.5 or 0.05. So uh, with those two sources of value, the cash that they've accrued over that first period, plus the value of that infinite stream of, of cash flows, right before that dividend's paid, they have a value of $42 per share. So their overall market value is 4.2 million. Now they're going to pay out a cash dividend. And once that cash dividend is paid out, well, they're going to be worth less because they have less cash internally. 
So right after that dividend is paid, the only source of value is that infinite stream of cash flows, of, of $2 cash flows. And so their share price is $40. From an investor standpoint though, they have uh, that $40 uh, per share in value, but they also just receive $2 per share in dividend. So looking at their portfolio um, of an investor who owns 21 shares of the stock, they have 21 shares. They have each share is worth $40 per share. And so they have $840 in value in their portfolio coming from those 21 shares. They also have $42 of cash. That's because they own 21 shares and they just received $2 per share in the form of a cash dividend. So their overall wealth is the two sources of value, one being the cash dividend, the other coming from the 21 shares valued at $40 per share. Now let's switch to the share repurchasing case. And we're going to start off with a clean um, sheet, but everything's the exact same. So once again, everything is the exact same, same timeline, same earnings process, same everything. At time period zero, the, uh, the value of a share is still $40 and it still has $4 million in market cap. Now let's fast forward one year where they've already accrued that $2 per share in earnings. And let's look at the price. Once again, it's $42, the $2 in cash that they've accrued, plus the present value of that future uh, stream of cash flows of $2 per share forever. So their market value is once again, $4.2 million. Now in total, the company has accrued $200,000 um, of cash in order to buy back these shares. That is that they have 100,000 shares outstanding and each one of those shares, uh, or they had $2 in earnings per share. So they have $200,000 in which they want to pay out to shareholders. So right before that payout, each share of stock is worth $42 per share. So the company is able to buy back $200,000 worth of stuff and it's trading at $42 per share. So they have, uh, they can, they're able to buy back 4,762 shares of stock. All right. Once they buy back those shares, they're going to have, not surprisingly, less shares outstanding. So they started off with 100,000 shares. They just bought back 4,762 shares. So there's 95,238 shares still outstanding. Now, this is where the, the, we need to just sort of switch the math just a little bit. These future cash flows that are happening forever are uh, uh, $200,000 per period. We got that because in the ori original problem, it was $2 per share um, of earnings um, being uh, paid out that they need to pay out, and they had 100,000 shares. So what that really means, if we drew it all on the timeline, the total cash flow is $200,000 per year that they need to pay out. So with that, we can skip to just calculating the total market value of all the equity. So this is the total value of the, the entire equity position of the company. And so we take that $200,000 that they're generating every year, we divide it by the required return, which is 5% or 0.05, and we get the total market value of the company as $4 million. But now we need to translate that into a price per share. Now we know now after they bought back those shares, there's only 95,238 shares outstanding. So this $4 million in value is actually split among fewer outstanding shares. So you've got $4 million in value split among 95,000 shareholders or 95,000 shares. And what you get here is a value or a price per share of $42. So the same amount of value, this 
four million dollars but now it's split among fewer shares outstanding so now let's look at that individual investor who has 21 shares of stock now let's say they have 21 shares but they decide to sell one share right after the repurchase well now they have 20 shares of stock in their portfolio but each one of those shares is currently valued at $42. So the dollar value of their portfolio is $840. They did sell one share though. They had 21, now they have 20. So they, when they sold that share, they sold one share of stock. It was currently trading at $42. And so they have $42 in cash from the sale of that stock. These numbers are exactly the same as when a company is paying a cash dividend. They're identical. So an investor can create a homemade dividend simply by selling some fraction of their position in the company. So dividends and share buybacks are economically equivalent. Now, some people will disagree with that, and that's totally fine. I think one point of confusion or one thing that's confounding this in real life is the decision by managers on which form of payout to choose. So some types of companies will choose to pay out in the form of a dividend. Some types of companies will choose to pay out in the form of a share repurchase. And this depends on their risk profile, what kind of industry they're in, how mature they are, how much financial flexibility is uh, they need. Um, ultimately, companies that pay out in the form of a dividend or those that pay out in a share repurchase have different characteristics which create different risk profiles. So when you're trying to say that dividends are better than share repurchases or share repurchases are better than dividends, the, what's getting lost here is that these are two different types of companies, and it's not a direct comparison. So if you like investing in dividend-paying stocks, awesome. If you're using that as a shorthand to, short, uh, to sort for uh, mature companies that are, have stable earnings, and that's the kind of company you want to invest in, awesome. But at the end of the day, share repurchases and dividends are both forms of payouts um, from a company, and that an individual investor can replicate the cash flows from a dividend-paying company um, with the, the shares of a share repurchasing company. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I know this is a, a point of confusion for a lot of students and a lot of people out there. Um, if this was helpful, uh, I, I appreciate giving it a thumbs up so other students can find it and realize that this was helpful to you. So thank you and have a good day.